Hello and welcome to a product testing video. We're using the Koala Inkjet Matte Printer Paper. It's the first time I've used a matte printer paper before and I wanted to see how it would go. I'm doing an impression here in dye-based black ink. I put a little bit of tone into it, a um, little bit of brown into that black. Um, the impression came out a little bit uneven uh, for some reason, I don't know why. And this one here, I'm going to be doing uh, stays on um, inks on this one. I don't know, I just figured since I'm going doing a test, might as well kind of mix up the inks a little bit. Dye based inks impressions here with the leaves stamp. And I'm trying to get some multiple tones in it, so I'm using um, some reds, oranges. I don't know if I used a little bit of yellow on uh, the uh, leaves here, maybe a little bit. But this is how you get that kind of uh, watercolory looking uh, type of impression by adding multiple tones. Okay, and just going with a straight stays on black here. I don't have uh, other colors of stays on ink, so, um, you know, I, di I didn't have the ability to use them here, but I should probably pick up a few extra colors at some point in time. Okay, those are my foundations right there. We have a little bit of overhanging foreground and our main image, and I'm using some of the... A um, little rock here to add in some additional texture down at the base of this um, scene. On this one right here I stamped the bridge a little bit higher so I added some of that sedge filler there to kind of make um, continue out the, uh, the road um, uh, definition right there. And again with the rocks. Okay, we're going to use um, some of the Reed's Large. The Reed's Large does not come in that um, covered bridge set, but I use it all the time, and uh, I don't know, it's one that I would really uh, recommend for people because it's a great image to add in your foreground without kind of obscuring the things that are going on in the background. Okay, left side dye-based inks and right side stays on. Okay, now right here I'm going in with the Distressed and ink antique linen and this isn't the best technique to use on this type of paper because the ink dries so quickly you know this you know the inkjet printer papers are designed with something in the chemistry of the coating of these types of surfaces that makes it so that you know your inkjet printers will die dry as fast as possible. You know, if you're printing out a photograph or something like that, you don't want that ink suspended in a, kind of a liquid form for too long because it'll blur the uh, image too much. So, I don't know, but I'm just getting a, a little bit of base layer coat using this. Very light, um, aged looking, um, kind of warm tan color, okay? And you can do this process or not. Um, it kind of gives you a little bit of a head start in terms of the other media to come. Okay, in this case for me, it's using some uh, colored pencils. And on the other one, the dye-based ink impression um, composition, I do use some um, alcohol markers. Okay, so I'm getting some alcohol markers in the color scheme of my scene. So. Um, some tan colors, browns, oranges, reds, pinks, and some greens will be added down in that grassy area. Okay, so I'm just kind of adding some of this in. I'm not coloring everything in. I, I do want that road to look like a dirt road. And so I'm uh, adding some of that tan color down there. Now I'm adding in a bunch of uh, tone into my... Uh, trees, my fall foliage trees, or trees in, you know, full color. And adding the alcohol inks on here, it's not like doing it on a glossy printer paper. Um, the paper absorbs the inks pretty fast, so you can do a little bit of blending, but not a lot. You know, again, the inks are, you know, this paper is designed to dry things very quickly. So you get the benefit of that, but if you want to do some blending, uh, the liquid media, be it fast drying alcohol inks or the slower drying um, dye based inks, not the greatest thing for that. But it's good to get a foundation going with these uh, types of liquid media here, um, because it provides a really great foundation for the dry media that I'm going to apply right over the top of this, okay? 
So just keep in mind, you know, if you start adding in some alkalings or dye based inks, it's going to be a little bit clunky, but you're just using it as a foundation color just as a head start for your other colors to come, other media to come. Okay, so in this case, I'm using the colored pencils here. And the colored pencils are really going to come to my rescue. I would imagine if you're using chalks or pastels on this paper, I think those would work really well too. Now, if you're someone that's really um, proficient at doing things like um, watercolors, or you know, if that's one of your mediums, I think this paper would take that okay. I don't see why it wouldn't. Um, it would probably have the feeling of drying faster than on, you know, a textured watercolors style of paper. Um, but I don't know for sure. I'm not a watercolorist, but I'm just kind of, I don't know, thinking of it in general uh, in terms of the, uh, the chemistry of this paper here. Okay, so adding in some other tones, uh, some browns. I'm going with the black uh, colored pencil here. And the scene, you know, starts to come together pretty well. Um, I think I add in a little bit more tone on that road down there, but um, for the most part, I mean, the scenes, I mean, it's almost done here. I mean, you, it could be done right now, but I do like to add in some other types of textures and uh, things like paint pens um, work really well for that purpose. And um, especially on a very absorbent surface like this, um, you can use something like the paint pens and they go on where you want them to go and they don't get absorbed into the background and they dry very quickly. Okay, so this is a white um, 0.7 millimeter acrylic paint pen, extra fine tip, going in and redefining some of the uh, little rocks and things like that that got a little bit obscured um, through the use of both the dye-based inks and the alkalings that were previously applied. You know, those inks, as I was doing it, you know, there you can do some detailing with the uh, alcohol pens, but I was just kind of coloring things in general. And then I go back in and I redefine things that are lost, like little details or highlights with the white pens or, you know, just paint pens in general. Okay, so using some oranges right here, giving the trees some extra dimension. Doing these acrylic pens on just about any type of surface, there's not really too much of a difference between any surface that you use this type of pen on because they're very surface oriented. They go on and they dry pretty fast. Um, I would say within, I don't know, I mean it depends on the, how dry um, your area is, relative um, humidity. Um, but for me, I don't know, a couple minutes and it's completely dry. Okay, adding some of that orange down in that green to give the green area down there, the grass area, a little bit of continuity with those trees in the background. In fall types of uh, environments, you know, with a lot of that fall foliage, you'll often see um, the ground cover also having that kind of fall, you know, type of color scheme. Going in with a white uh, pigment ink here on a cotton ball, adding very light thin layers onto some of the imagery to give it extra depth and to make it look like there's kind of more kind of this uh, enveloping illumination through the scene. Kind of oscillate it though, don't put it everywhere, okay? If you're putting it next to the covered bridge, then put it in one area or two, but don't do it over the whole thing. And you'll get a more varied, rich surface as a result. Okay, now on this one right here with the stays on ink, I, I was thinking I might go in there more with uh, the dye-based inks to color because they wouldn't um, smear the solvent ink stays on impressions, but I knew by this point in time just doing that first one that dye-based inks and kind of blending wet media on this type of surface, not the best thing for it, okay? We do have that foundation color with the antique linen, but I thought let's just not even bother with um, additional wet media on this one. If I use the alcohol inks so over the stays on, it would probably smear it at this point in time, but if you allow it to dry overnight, maybe not, but I don't know, I just wanted to test it out right now, so I'm just going in just directly with the colored pencils. So, for this type of um, paper, I think it's great for colored pencils. Um, there's enough, oh, kind of tooth and surface texture to it to allow the pencils to apply with 
without any problems. I didn't really encounter anything. Um, it's not a, you know, a real super texturized paper that's really conducive for things like watercolors and colored pencils if you're doing like colored pencil drawings, but for our purposes in stamping, I found it to be perfectly adequate for this um, media, and I was able to apply it very, oh, uh, I don't know, evenly and effortlessly, no problem at all. Okay, so I'm going through um, some various tones. Uh, the first one was a fall color scheme, and the second one I'm doing it more like, I don't know, maybe like springtime or something like that. More green um, color schemes. Okay, so you can see I'm kind of working with a darker green right now. I applied kind of a general coat of those warmer, lighter tones, the yellow greens, but now I'm kind of adding this darker green in the shadow areas. In the designs themselves, there's shadow areas, there's darker and lighter areas, and then, you know, it you don't have to kind of, you know, invent your shadow kind of um, strategies within your designs. Just darken in the areas that are already dark on the designs, and that's all I'm doing here. And uh, you just kind of build it up just uh, lightly. Okay, I felt I felt that this one needed a little bit more structure down here. We have that overhanging, um, you know, dark, um, whatever, canopy up top coming down. So I just wanted to give it a little bit more balance with the use of the um, fences here. It's kind of a visual lead in into the scene. Okay, and just going back into it with the white paint pen again. Uh, defining some highlights in here. But when I started looking at it, I thought that white paint pen those little dots would look good as like flowers you know like these little white blossoming uh, flowers on these deciduous trees so I, I went a little bit heavier with it to look like um, you know like blooming trees okay adding a little bit of highlighting to those uh, fences all right and that was the white right there and this piece is almost done I decided to use a little bit of the three millimeter acrylic paint pens just to get a little bit more scale in those highlights and textures. Adding a little bit of shadow work down at the base of these uh, fence posts. It kind of anchors the fences down. Anytime you have some kind of object that would be opaque and not see-through and I don't know whatever real life, nature, what, uh, whatnot, anchor it a little bit after you've stamped it down, put a little bit of shadow on it. doesn't have to be a super dark one, but if you add a little bit of shadow at the base of things, it gives them more visual weight and um, kind of substance. All right, just adding that white opaque, um, well, not opaque, but translucent thin layer of white pigment ink back in there to give things a little bit more, oh, kind of variation and uh, adding in that little bit of atmosphere into the scene. And that finishes uh, the scene off for me. Again, don't use it everywhere. Kind of oscillate it a little bit. Have it in some background trees and maybe not in other areas of the trees. And you can get a really good um, varied surface. And there you have it. Um, I don't know. I enjoyed working on this paper and I thought it worked out pretty good, especially with the colored pencils. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.